Hey YouTube, this is Austin Allen. Today I'm sharing a project I put together to enable wireless Bluetooth control of three gimbal motors using a base cam controller board and two ESP32 S3 development boards. Each gimbal is controlled by its own single axis joystick and the joystick data is transmitted wirelessly using Bluetooth Low Energy. My instructional article and all the product links are available in the description. I hope you enjoy this project and if you have any questions feel free to drop a comment and also like and subscribe. Thank you. Here is my demo setup. What we have on uh, my left is the primary or client ESP32, which is reading from these three single axis joysticks uh, through uh, the analog um, input uh, pins. This ESP32 is powered by a five volt uh, backup battery. It's just a standard uh, backup battery you can buy from Amazon. This one's from the brand Anker. Um, in the middle, we have the receiving or secondary or peripheral um, ESP32, which is receiving messages from the primary or the client ESP32 over Bluetooth Low Energy. Um, this ESP32 is connected through two serial pins to a base cam extended long gimbal control board. Um, this um, board is powered by this uh, Ovonic brand uh, LiPo battery, um, which is a 4S battery. Um, I'm using these spring-loaded uh, wire connectors to connect the power into the base cam board, and then this ESP32 receives its power from this board, but this ESP32 is completely separated. There's no uh, wire connection there. What we have here on the right are three DM5005 gimbal motors from SMC Powers. These three motors are connected to the base cam board over CAN bus uh, interface. Uh, the CAN bus, um, if you're not familiar, um, protocol dictates that each of these three motors are connected in parallel through the CAN low signal and the CAN high signal. And the way that CAN bus works is that um, it's what you'd call differential. So the difference in between the low signal for uh, the CAN protocol and the high signal, uh, that difference is what's used to determine the digital signal that gets sent over the wires. So um, basically CAN bus is nice because um, when you twist the, the two wires together and there's electromagnetic um, interference that might be coming from, for example, a motor or an actuator um, that's electromechanical, um, it helps to cancel out the noise because if the low signal from CAN uh, shifts because the wires are twisted together, the high signal will also shift the same amount and so the total delta between the two um, doesn't change and so the signal is um, less prone to um, noise and interference from electromagnetic uh, waves. So to give a demo of these motors moving, um, basically I've got these motors pre-programmed uh, uh, through the variables that I had set using the base cam uh, graphical user interface or GUI software. Um, basically these motors will respond to the orientation of the IMU, the inertial measurement unit, which is built into this base cam board. Um, in addition, uh, the motors will react to um, commanded uh, angle signals from these three single axis joysticks, which are being sent from the primary ESP32 through Bluetooth Low Energy to the secondary or the peripheral, so from the client to peripheral, and then it's sent over this, uh, this pair of serial uh, wires uh, directly into the base cam board. The interface between um, this Arduino and this Arduino uh, is facilitated using uh, the base cam API, which you can download from their website. Um, the API uh, is programmed using the Arduino framework through platform IO, which you can use through um, Visual Studio Code. So you can set um, all those, um, you can set the parameters that you want, you can send the commands that you want to the specific motors, you know, add logic or add, you know, changes to the code, whichever you'd like to do in the code. So uh, we've got two modes of um, reaction. These motors will drift a little bit because they're trying to respond to the IMU that's on board to try to match the orientation of this board. Um, so that's why there's a little bit of drift there. But you can play with these settings in the, um, in the base cam uh, GUI as well. So just to show you, um, each of these motors is linked to one of three axes. So this one is for yaw. You can see the bottom mo motor is moving. 
And then we have the other two axes responding kind, and they are pretty responsive. So we go along one axis, the other axis, and then the third. So they do respond. So between the three of them, they are fairly responsive. And so if you can imagine these mounted on a, um, uh, a motorized gimbal with these uh, motors on them, they would be trying to react to the, the inertial, measure inertial measurement unit of um, the uh, control board. You can also have an external um, IMU if you wish. Um, but this one had just so happens to have a built-in IMU, so I'm using it for the demo. So the secondary control mode is by setting the angle, which you can do, uh, oops, I have to reset. So um, reset this ASP32, reset this ASP32 to establish the Bluetooth connection. And then once set, now they respond in kind. So this joystick is setting the angle here. This one sets this angle. Then this one sets the top angle. And that is done wirelessly through uh, Bluetooth Low Energy. Here is Basecam Electronics website where they have a family of products that are used for stabilization and motor control. Um, this is the particular board that I was using for this project. It's the simple BGC 32-bit extended long. Take a look there. Um, so this is the uh, product uh, page. It gives a description, talks about some of the capabilities. Uh, it mentions here the serial API that um, we use the um, direct connected uh, ESP32 to um, send and receive um, data from this board. Um, it talks a little bit more about the capabilities, um, some of the specifications. There are some downloads such as the controller um, CAD model, um, which has been uh, useful. Um, a connection diagram has a few more. Um, it's got a user manual. It also links to the, uh, the graphical user interface, the GUI. Um, so this is what you use when you want to um, read and write um, settings uh, to the board as well as visualize uh, the output from the board. Uh, for example, the orientation of uh, any sort of uh, an IMU or inertial measurement unit they have on the board or off board. This is the specific web page on Basecam's website for the serial API. And again, the API is what's used to um, communicate uh, with the board from the ESP32. Um, they link to uh, this uh, serial API protocol specification document, which is a PDF. Um, so opening that up, um, it looks like it's really detailed and it has a lot of really um, uh, specific information. Um, I personally did not need to refer to this document because I just based my code off of uh, an existing example and then modified it for my own needs. Um, but you know, this, uh, this could be a good reference. Um, Going over to their uh, GitHub, uh, which is here. Um, we've got the uh, SBGC32 serial API, which is what I use for this project. Um, so uh, it's a C library. Um, it talks about some of the files that are there. Um, it talks about how to use the library, how to import it, um, how to include it in your, um, your project. Um, what I found most useful for my project was going to the examples um, directory, and then you go to Arduino, um, and then you go to uh, Mimic Control, and then it's a platform IO uh, style of project. So um, what you want to do in order to set this up is you want to download Microsoft uh, Visual Studio code, um, and then platform IO on top of that, and then you can import uh, this um, project. Um, and so when you import it, uh, you can then go to source and you can check main, which is the um, main uh, code that gets run. Um, but of course, there are other files that um, have uh, property definitions and object definitions uh, that are referred between one another. But um, this is how they structured it. And so this is where I based uh, my initial code off of. This is the SMC Powers website. Um, and here is the particular motor that I use for this project. It's the DM5005 gimbal motor. And this motor on its own does not come with a driver, which has to be purchased separately, which I'll show in a moment. Um, it provides some of the specification, including the uh, number of uh, poles in the motor, um, which is used in the um, base cam uh, GUI software. Um, it also talks about the input voltage. So you have a range between 10.5 to 16.8 volts input. Um, and then 
um, give some of the information about the dimensions um, and some other uh, information about the motor there as well. Um, the driver that's installed is this one here. It's the BGC CAN DRV uh, driver. Um, there's an, an alternative uh, motor driver from the same vendor, which is open CAN, uh, but you want, uh, you want regular CAN bus, not open CAN. Um, at least that's what I use for this um, project. Um, driver uh, is compatible uh, with the DM50. So the DM5005 is compatible. Um, and then uh, it gives the uh, input power um, and then gives some other specifications. Um, the uh, ordering of the pins is what's most um, important here when it comes to the wiring diagram. Um, the first two pins are the power in. Uh, so the voltage in that would come from battery, for example, the 4S battery. The next two pins are ground from the battery. And then we have um, uh, can high and then can low on the last uh, two pins here. Um, these two connectors are included here so that you can daisy chain the motors if you wish. Uh, but for this particular uh, project, what I did was instead um, I split the wires off in parallel um, offboard. Um, and that's how I connected the motors together in parallel. Um, here's some information about the um, dimensions and it gives a wiring diagram as well. So here you can see um, you want to basically tie um, the uh, battery power in uh, and the ground um, all together and then also tie the CAN high and CAN low pins together for the three motors and then connect them to the ca CAN bus uh, connector on your uh, base CAM board. Um, the board that's shown here is not the extended long uh, board, but this is uh, useful as a, um, a reference diagram. Um, it also gives a few uh, pieces of information about the um, setting up the CAN bus connection in the base cam um, GUI software. Um, basically, you would go to the CAN modules um, tab, and then for each of the three motors that's um, connected, you select uh, a separate um, CAN um, driver number uh, or ID, whatever you'd like to call it and you can click scan devices to look for it and then click on right to save those values. This is my company website where I sell um, a variety of products, including the single axis joystick that I used for this project. Um, this gives uh, some of the information in the description about the joystick module, which is available now for purchase. I additionally sell some other products, including these EMT conduit um, telescoping clamps so that you can make a uh, telescoping pole out of EMT conduit if you wish. And I sell them in um, different bundle sizes as well for a discount. Here is the single axis joystick module as it arrives uh, shipped by my business. Um, so uh, it comes with its own cap, but feel free to 3D print yourself a custom cap if you'd like a different look or aesthetic or um, feel to the touch. Um, in my previous um, single axis joystick um, video, I shared a demo box which had three different types of caps. So feel free to use those as inspiration if you're looking for uh, different um, cap designs uh, that are different from the standard one that comes shipped with the unit. Um, there are three pins on the joystick. Um, there are three pads. Uh, there's ground, signal, and uh, VCC. So that's just power in. So this would be 3.3 volts or 5 volts. Ground is ground, and then the signal is the analog output, which you would read into an Arduino, or an analog to digital converter into a Raspberry Pi, or an ESP32, or uh, what have you. <clears throat> so yeah, as you can see, it is just a single axis. So um, the uh, module also comes with these uh, three pin uh, right angle headers, which you can solder directly onto the, um, onto the pads if you wish to connect jumper wires. You can also connect on the underside, or you can solder the wires directly to um, these uh, pads. Um, while I'm mentioning products on my website, um, I also offer these uh, telescoping clamps of two different sizes for EMT conduit that are useful for DIY projects as well. Um, so I've had a number of customers who use these for all kinds of outdoor projects and um, photography stands, uh, GoPro extension poles, um, you know, different types of sporting equipment for nets and uh, barriers, uh, string lights, um, string light poles that are extendable. 
Um, and so when those are installed onto EMT conduit, it looks like this. So you've got three sizes of EMT conduit. Um, you've got a one half inch uh, EMT conduit on the top. That's that's the name of the size, but it's not actually one half inches in diameter. That's just the uh, the trade name, or the um, that's what they call it in the industry. Um, here's the lower clamp. So then this is three fourths inch uh, EMT conduit. That's again that's the trade size, not the actual. It's not actually um, three quarters of an inch in diameter. And then at the bottom we have uh, one inch uh, again trade size EMT conduit. This is the CAD assembly for the project. Um, basically, uh, we've got three single axis uh, joysticks that I sell at my company um, that are bolted with some M2 standoffs to the bottom of this 3D printed base. Um, we have a, a small breadboard with an adhesive uh, bottom that's attached directly to uh, the plastic of the 3D printed base with an ESP32 uh, S3 uh, official dev board. Um, on the right, we have another set of, um, let's see, these were M3 standoffs um, that are also bolted to uh, the uh, to the 3D printed base. This is the base cam extended long gimbal control board. And then we have our three DM5005 uh, gimbal motors from SMC Powers with three 3D printed um, arrows just to indicate uh, during the video which direction the motors are pointed. This is the 3D printer I used to print the base for this project, um, as well as the three arrow indicators that go on the gimbal motors. This is a Voxel Lab brand uh, Ares 3D printer, which I'm not even sure if they sell them anymore. Um, I bought mine on Amazon some time ago. Um, I used just a uh, standard black, um, I think it was PLA plus filament for the project. This is Ultimaker Cura. Uh, this is the CAD slicer uh, program that I use with my Voxel Lab uh, Ares uh, 3D printer. Um, and so what I did was I uh, created this model for the base in Autodesk Fusion 360, exported it as an STL file, and then imported it into this um, Ultimaker uh, Cura software. Uh, when you import it, um, you basically lay it flat on the uh, print bed, and then I added a, um, a raft. Um, and then when you go to preview after you slice, um, I did a 20% infill with a gyroid uh, pattern on the infill. And so looking down through the layer slices, you can see it does have that gyroid pattern, um, which uh, I believe um, is a pretty quick way of printing infill. And so that's why it selected that because it's not meant to um, it's not meant to be structurally strong, it's just meant to be um, uh, aesthetic. And so the style of infill, whichever one was faster, that's what I chose. This is the wiring diagram for the direct uh, connection setup for the gimbal control uh, demonstration. Um, again, we've got the three uh, single axis joysticks on the left, um, whose signal pins are each being fed into three separate um, analog read pins on the uh, ESP32 dev board. Um, each of these joysticks is being fed 3.3 uh, volts power in parallel, and all the grounds are also uh, tied together. <clears throat> um, let's see, the ESP32 is connected to 5 volt and uh, ground uh, that is coming from the um, base cam board. Um, so those pins are connected directly to provide power. Um, in the code, <clears throat> I set the uh, the TX and RX pins on the ESP32 to be GPIO 17 and 18, and those are directly connected to the RC underscore serial dot TX and RC um, uh, underscore serial dot uh, RX pins, uh, as you can see through the diagram. Um, we have a uh, 4S LiPo battery um, that is feeding directly into the um, battery uh, plug uh, on the base cam board. Um, and then we also have that battery power that's feeding into the SMC Powers uh, CAN bus drivers that are installed in the DM5005 gimbal um, uh, motors. Um, this is the CAN bus connection here. So we have CAN low in blue and CAN high in yellow. Um, and for each of the three um, CAN bus uh, motor drivers, we have the CAN low pins tied together and the CAN high pins tied together. 
um, in a um, CAN um, wiring protocol, um, what you want to do is actually twist the, uh, the CAN low and CAN high wires together so that uh, you can effectively reduce the amount of noise that's seen by the signal because it is a differential signal. Um, so it's not indicated here in the wiring diagram, but you'd want to actually twist these wires together. Um, and finally, we have a micro USB um, cable uh, that is connected from a laptop running the um, simple BGC uh, GUI software from Basecamp's website uh, that's connected directly into the micro USB um, connector on the uh, base cam board. This is the Bluetooth low energy wiring diagram, which is largely similar to the direct connection wiring diagram from before. Um, the pins are essentially um, all the same between the two sets of um, diagrams, except now the joysticks connect to uh, the client or primary ESP32, which is sending um, Bluetooth low energy BLE um, data to the peripheral or the secondary ESP32 uh, wirelessly. Um, I chose the same pins uh, for the signals on the primary um, ESP32 to read from the three joysticks, so GPS 6, 7, and 15 again. Um, and now we have, uh, because these um, two circuits are um, uh, they're wireless with respect to each other, um, I have the primary ESP32 being powered by uh, it could be any 5 volt power source as long as it's not connected over here, unless you wanted it to be, of course, but then that would defeat the purpose of it being wireless. So um, basically you have this guy connected, um, you could perhaps plug it into your laptop, USB, uh, USB port, or to uh, a 5 volt uh, backup battery that you can buy on Amazon. Any standard battery would do the trick, 5 volts, um, that connects to USB. Um, aside from that, um, the wiring diagram is basically the same. Here's how the, uh, the motor and the driver are uh, assembled together, um, as well as the uh, cable that connects into the uh, driver here. Um, so um, taking off this back cover for the gimbal motor, um, it's got two screws that attach it there. Pop this guy off the back. This is the uh, CAN bus um, driver board from SMC Powers. Um, and uh, the first thing you'd want to know is this. Um, we've got this uh, dip switch here. So setting these first three switches sets the CAN um, address or the ID uh, that's used to distinguish between the different um, motors that are connected on the, um, on the bus for CAN protocol. Uh, the fourth switch, um, you'll Basically, uh, as far as I know, you want to leave it in the on position because it provides some extra resistance at the end of the, um, the CAN connection. I believe it's a 120 ohm resistor that's um, helpful in some way or another. <laughs> um, so this uh, driver board is mounted onto the motor using these two screws. So I'll pull these off. So these come off. Oops. These come off, and so on the underside, um, basically you've got three um, uh, connection, uh, three uh, pads that are connected for the motors, uh, three phase wires. So there are three phase wires from the motor, and then there are two um, that I believe are for a thermistor, but these um, CAN bus boards are not compatible with the thermistor, so I just cut those leads short and push them off to the side, um, but then connect on uh, A, B, and C um, for the three uh, brushless DC uh, motor phase wires um, and then that assembles back on and then you plug in your cable and that's pretty much it. Um, when you install this uh, CAN bus driver just uh, you know take care not to pinch the um, the phase wires when you assemble everything back together. Okay so now that that's reassembled um, you can basically just plug in the uh, connector cable and you're good to go. And that's it, that's how the motor is assembled. I wanted to talk briefly about the cables that connect the base cam control board to the gimbal motors. The gimbal motors have a six pin 
uh, ZH 1.5 millimeter um, uh, connector. Uh, that's a ZH series. And then the base cam board has a Molex Pico Blade 1.25 millimeter um, uh, connector for CAN bus. Um, on the uh, CAN bus connection for the base cam board, you only need to connect the CAN low and CAN high uh, pins again because it's a differential signal. So you only need those two um, those two uh, signals because they'll be referenced with respect to each other. You don't need to wire up ground into um, uh, this pin or um, five volts, which I believe those other two pins on this four pin connector are five volts in ground. Um, so you only need to do uh, can low and can high. Um, on the connector for the gimbal motor, um, you do need to include the power in from the battery and the ground from the battery as well, and then the two um, uh, can uh, signals, so can high and can low. Um, what I typically like to do to make these cables is I like to buy these generic um, uh, pre crimped uh, cable uh, assembly kits from Amazon. Um, so this one is a 1.25 millimeter um, pitch um, uh, connector set, and so it typically comes with a number of different um, pin counts, um, and it gives you a little bit of heat shrink as well, and so here are the pre-crimped uh, cables, and so I found that with very small cables that are kind of finicky to crimp, um, I would rather just buy this kit and then I can assemble, and if you need to, you can always trim uh, the cable on the opposite end and then solder and heat shrink uh, any additional um, cabling that you might need. Um, if you need to do something like a custom cable fully and you'd like to crimp these yourself, um, you can certainly buy the, uh, the crimps. And then what I typically like to do for a custom cable in that case is use this iWIS brand um, uh, crimper tool. Um, but for this project, I didn't uh, need to do that because I brought these, I bought these uh, pre-crimped cables. Um, so in that kit, um, basically you would pick out uh, a four pin um, connector. And then what you do is you uh, basically take your uh, pre-crimped wires and you plug them directly in and then that um, establishes the connection. So you take that and here's the pre-crimped wire, it's a little hard to see. But you would take that and on one end of the um, crimp there's a little tab and that tab is meant to lock into this hole on the, um, on the connector. So you just take it and you press it in and now it's secure. Then you take your yellow. I happen to use blue and yellow for this uh, project for the two can um, signals. Okay, now it's connected, and now you can insert that directly into the um, the can uh, connector on the um, the base cam uh, control board. So that's the base cam uh, connection side. Um, on the gimbal um, cable side, uh, I brought these pre-crimped cables, these generic uh, ZH uh, series, uh, 1.5 millimeter. Um, pre-crimped uh, wires with uh, connectors. <clears throat> and so um, basically you do the exact same thing um, according to the order of these pins, um, which let's see, uh, I'll just double check it. Um, okay, so in order from top to bottom, it's um, battery in, battery in, so those are both positive, so positive battery voltage, and then ground, ground from the battery, and then can, high and then can low. So that's the order from top to bottom. And so you'd follow the same procedure. You take yourself uh, one of those um, six uh, pin connectors. Um, and then let's just figure out the orientation first. Let's see. Let me go in that way. Oops. Nope, doesn't go that way either. Okay, it does go that way. Okay. So now that I've figured out the orientation, um, basically what you want to do is um, grab yourself uh, the appropriate um, cable colors from your assortment here. Um, so we'll have uh, one black, one red, one yellow, one blue, and then use those to make a cable. And then um, 
same uh, procedure as for the um, the smaller uh, cable that's used for the base cam board. Um, there's a little tab on one end of the crimp that's used to lock in. So you insert that into the first um, position. Oops, these can be a little bit finicky because they're kind of noodly. Okay, so you press it in. Now it's secure. And then you do the remainder. So you skip one terminal. So on pin number three, so if you're counting one, two, three from the top, then on pin number three, you do ground. Again, these um, connections can be, wires can be a little bit noodly because I believe they're silicone um, insulation. Um, and then you skip one more terminal and you insert your yellow for can, um, uh, can high. And then your final connection will be can low. I'll just use a tool to press that guy in there. There we go. And your final one is your can low. And that goes there. So we have battery in, skip, battery, uh, I'm sorry, um, battery positive voltage, skip, battery ground or negative, uh, something that's marked with a plus or a minus um, on the third pin. Fourth pin is a skip. Uh, fifth pin is can high. Uh, sixth pin is can low. And so now you've got your cable. Oops. And you can plug that directly into the um, into the gimbal board. And so again, if you needed to uh, splice wires together, you could trim the ends of these um, and then solder them together onto the end of the um, the cable that connects into the base cam board. Or you could use um, snap. Uh, I guess they're called spring-loaded uh, wire um, terminals, uh, which is what I happen to use for this project. This is the base cam GUI software. It's called Simple BGC uh, GUI. Um, and what you want to do in order to connect to your base cam board is first you connect your base cam board using a micro USB cable to your PC. Um, and then what you do is you select the uh, appropriate COM port. In this case, it's COM39 for me. Click on connect. Now you can see the board is connected. It's the GD32 extended. That's the extended long board. Um, it talks about the um, firmware uh, version as well. Um, so the main tabs uh, that you want to be aware of, um, first off, would be the um, CAN modules. So this is how uh, you would um, cause the board to identify the three motors um, that uh, you've connected over the um, CAN bus connection. So you click on scan devices. It'll look for those devices. And then you can see uh, three uh, drivers here. Um, these correspond to the three driver um, IDs that I had set on the uh, CAN drivers for each of the three motors using the small dip, dip switch. Um, on the underside of those uh, driver boards. Um, so we have um, driver one, two, and four as specified. Um, what you can then do is you can go down to um, CAN driver software configuration. You can choose which um, driver you want to modify. Um, what you want to do first is you want to click on calibrate uh, right and left. Um, it says it'll cause some strong vibrations. That's fine. Click yes. And so what will happen is that the motor will, um, you know, it could chirp a little, could buzz a little. Uh, but what it's doing is it's calibrating that motor. So you let it let it go ahead and go through that um, step. And then uh, after you do that, you click on the right button to write those settings to the motor. I've already calibrated the motor, so um, I don't need to do that step again, but I wanted to show you the process. Um, you do the same thing for um, drivers two and four or three or whichever uh, values you, cho uh, you chose. <clears throat> um, Let's see, uh, the rest of this I didn't really change. Um, I kept all the other settings um, just as their defaults. Um, next, uh, in the uh, hardware tab, what you want to do for your motors is, um, because these are the DM5005, as listed on the specifications on the SMC Powers website, it said that the number of poles is 28. So you set 28 for the three motors. Um, set their motor outputs to um, the three CAN drivers that you specified for roll, pitch, and yaw. Um, if you want, you can reverse the directions of the motors. In this next section, um, still under the hardware tab, you scroll down a bit, and you come to the main IMU sensor section. Um, 
Here, you can select to use the onboard uh, inertial measurement unit, or IMU, that's on the extended long uh, base cam board, if you wish. And this is what I use for this project as well. So I set that to be checked on. Um, and what you want to do in order to enable um, the gimbal motors to react to uh, the IMU as well as you need to calibrate it. So click on Calibrate IMU. And then what you want to do is place the base cam board um, parallel to each of its three um, axes. So it would be on six edges in total if you did all six edges. So for example, um, you lay it flat on the table first, and then you click on Calibrate. It calibrates and now in the positive Z direction, it's now been calibrated. And then you need at least two axes that are calibrated, but the more axes you calibrate, the better. Um, so then you take your base cam board and you lay it uh, on one of its other edges. So now you see it is reacting. And so um, this will be a calibration along the positive X axis. So click on calibrate. Thumbs done. And then just for completeness, I'll rest it on another edge, so now it's along the negative y direction. And so as you can see, uh, as you start to calibrate each of the axes, you have a check mark next to each axis. Um, so then when that's done, you can click on close. And then as always, um, whenever you change the settings uh, in the GUI, you want to click on the right button in order to write those values to the base cam board in order to save them. You can go to service tab if you wish. You can um, turn on or off the buzzer and the LED for different types of warnings that the base cam board could spit out for you. Um, you know, change some of the other settings here. So there's there's quite a bit here that you can play with. Um, for this um, uh, demonstration, it's uh, nothing in here that's um, too critical. Um, let's see, if you go over to, um, which one is it? Uh, RC settings, here we are. Okay, so <clears throat> for RC settings, um, what you need to do in order to receive uh, those commands from the um, uh, the secondary or the peripheral ESP32 is you need to set this RC roll pin mode to a serial port. So to use the serial API um, and then scrolling down, this is the operation mode. So you can set either uh, an angle mode or a speed mode, um, which will change how the uh, joysticks will affect the um, uh, affect the behavior of the command signals into the uh, base cam board. Um, so you can you know change those around if you wish. Um, let's see. Um, here are some more settings for the operating mode. So you can set the um, the uh, various speeds. You can set some smoothing factors so that you get a nice smooth uh, motion. And you know these are things that would um, be most critical when you have a camera that's actually mounted to a gimbal. Um, because you want to have a nice transition between your different movements so it's not too jittery. But you don't want it to be too laggy either. So you need to have a nice balance there. And so you have to play with these values to do that. Um, you can set the maximum minimum angles here as well. Um, set the accelerations. And um, you can also set the jerk, um, which, if I recall correctly, is the it's the change in the acceleration. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure how that plays out. Um, I'm not sure how that plays out in... Uh, the visual aesthetics of cinematography, but um, I'd have to try that one out, but you also can change that one as well. Here's a dead band. Um, so this one is also useful in case, you know, you've got some um, noise or you've got some drift in your uh, joystick reading. So you can set this dead band value to be higher so that only when you receive values that are above um, this dead band value will the motors move. Otherwise, they'll stay um, still. Um, Let's see, that's it for this tab. Um, okay, so firmware upgrade. Um, the firmware upgrade is important with respect to um, the, um, the motor drivers. So you need to use a particular um, driver uh, firmware file, uh, which I'll include um, in you know, the, project, um, the project article for this demonstration. Um, and um, you should be able to find it there, um, the name of that file, uh, let me check it, is called, um, it's called can underscore DRV underscore new. Um, and so you basically load that file. Um, you click on browse. Yeah, can driver new bin. Uh, so you look at that file um, that's located on your computer. You click um, open 
And so uh, there it is. And so what you do for each of the three drivers is um, you click on Flash in order to update the um, driver so that it can use uh, CAN bus. Um, if you don't have this driver, um, the motors won't work because they need this CAN bus driver. So make sure you do that as well. And again, um, whenever you change any of the settings in the base cam GUI, make sure you click on the right button. And also, if you want to turn the motors on or off, you have to click the motors on and off button. And if you ever need to, you can always reset the um, system using the um, restart system uh, button. This is the Arduino code that's running on the primary ESP32 that's reading from the three single axis joysticks and then sending that information over Bluetooth Low Energy, BLE, to the secondary or peripheral ESP32. Um, walking quickly through the code, uh, we're using this BLE device Arduino library. Um, it's looking for a uh, device with this particular name, which is specified in the, the uh, peripheral ESP32's uh, code. Um, let's see, here are the pin definitions. It gives some dead zone values so that uh, if there's some drift in the joysticks, then um, for any readings that are below this particular threshold, then it won't send any data. So that can be useful in that way. Um, it sends a string of three comma separated integers, and each of those integers are uh, representing the um, analog readings from the three joysticks. Um, and so uh, to begin the program, it takes um, initial readings from the three joysticks so that they can be um, properly uh, teared or zeroed. Um, here's the read joysticks um, function that runs continuously. Um, in setup, it establishes a serial uh, communication with the laptop if desired. Um, connected through a micro USB cable to the laptop, um, grabs the initial readings, um, and then it looks for the ESP32 uh, secondary or peripheral, um, secondary or peripheral ESP32 with that particular device name um, that was mentioned here. So it's looking for ESP32 underscore S3 underscore BLE. Um, and then uh, it does a thing where it basically looks for the BLE uh, device. Um, if it's not connected, it sends out a message that says it didn't work. Um, otherwise, it said the connection was a success. And then it continuously reads from the joysticks and then sends that data out over BLE. So it's relatively um, straightforward. So I will um, I will get that started. Um, so you go to Tools and then Serial Monitor. Oops. Serial Monitor. Okay, looks like it did indeed find it. So the three uh, joysticks have a reading of zero. And then if you play with any three of the joysticks, then it will start to um, take readings. So you can basically play with those uh, as much or as little uh, as you wish. And so it will send that information over to the um, secondary uh, uh, or peripheral uh, ESP32 over Bluetooth Low Energy. This is the platform IO uh, project that's running on the uh, secondary or uh, peripheral uh, ESP32. Um, <clears throat> it's based uh, again on this um, GitHub project that came directly from Basecamp, which is this mimic control project. You can check the link if you wish. Um, the description gives a little bit more information about what code is being run on the primary ESP32. Um, it gives some of the um, pin definitions for the um, serial um, connection uh, from this ESP32 into the um, base cam board. So if you need to change those pins for RX and TX, you can. Um, I'll walk through this briefly. Um, uh, here you can specify whether you're working, uh, operating on um, the Bluetooth Low Energy mode or direct connection mode. Um, I gave those two wiring diagrams. And so if you're in wireless mode where you have one ESP32 that's sending the data from the joysticks uh, wirelessly over BLE. You set that to be true, otherwise you set it to be false. You can set the operating mode for the gimbal motors. So you could do speed uh, or you could do um, angle operating mode. Um, and so uh, as I um, indicate in the um, base cam uh, uh, GUI software, um, you specify this to match um, that control mode in the GUI software as well. Um, a lot of these variables were already um, predefined in the uh, Basecam um, Platform IO um, Mimic Control uh, example code uh, that this was based off of, uh, but I modified them. Um, so uh, I added basically uh, Bluetooth um, uh, 
receiving Bluetooth uh, data. Um, we have a serial debug port here so that you can spit the data out to the uh, serial terminal, which is at the bottom here, if you wish. Right now, you can see that it actually is receiving the uh, joystick, um, the joystick uh, signals from the three, um, or from the three joysticks. Well, <laughs> from the three joysticks. Um, here we have a joystick division factor. So in order to uh, more finely tune um, the uh, those values as they get sent to the base cam board, I basically take the values that are read from the joysticks and then uh, multiply them by this. Uh, uh, well, it's a division factor. And so basically you take that value and then you multiply it by, for example, 0 0.05 if you're in speed mode, or you multiply it by 0 0.1 if you're in angle mode. And so that changes um, the, the net value that gets sent to the um, to the base cam board. Um, let's see. Um, so basically it continuously operates. And then the idea is that you want to update this, um, this control, uh, object. And so this control object, um, you, uh, first can set it for control mode speed. And this is specified in, um, it's one of these other files here, but you can specify it to be uh, speed mode or angle mode. And I think there are a few other, um, operating mode, um, uh, settings that you can set for the control mode. Um, and so what you want to do if you're in speed mode is that you update this control dot axis and then you look at the pitch, um, pitch element, uh, dot speed, and you set it to the values that are read, um, or that are received from the joysticks. Um, and then same for angle. So it'd be angle equals that value that's received. Um, let's see. Um, here is like, uh, an optional, um, uh, rolling filter that you can pass to the joystick values. Um, so that helps with smoothing, but I take care of, um, where you can take care of the smoothing on the client, um, Bluetooth low energy ESP32 side, uh, code. So in that Arduino code, you can do it there instead, if you wish. So it initializes, um, and then as it runs, um, if you are, uh, if you're in Bluetooth low energy receiving mode, um, you take the values that are sent from the primary ESP32 over Bluetooth low energy, and then you populate the um, speed or the um, angle elements in this um, control uh, object. Um, if you are not in the Bluetooth low energy mode, um, you take those readings. So you take the analog read, um, and then uh, you multiply this by this uh, division factor, and then you subtract it by the initial value so that it's uh, properly zeroed. And you do that for the three axes. So I call them. Um, I call them XYZ, but it's really a roll pitch and yaw. Um, it's just a uh, naming. Um, and then you uh, update that control um, object, same as before. Um, and this final call at the bottom is what actually um, updates the um, uh, updates the base cam. Oops, typo there. Updates the base cam uh, controller. Um, and then in order to get a constant sampling time, then we have this little uh, variable here, so it checks to compare it um, to the uh, current time at the start of the loop. Um, so uh, checking some of the other files that are in this um, platform IO um, project, um, we've got this app.h. Um, this is a very simple, it's just read button state. So this is for reading buttons. So if you wanted to add an extra button, um, you know, to maybe like, uh, maybe add a button uh, and then, um, add a button, wire it up to the secondary or peripheral ESP32, and then when it uh, when it senses that that button has been pressed, so it could be a little tactile switch or a little um, uh, little panel-mounted push button or whatever you want, uh, then it could, for example, send some command or update variables or reset the base cam board or do whatever you wish. And so this is just a helper function used for that. I didn't use that for this project, but I just wanted to mention it here. This was in the structure from the original um, uh, mimic control uh, code that's on Basecamp's uh, GitHub. Um, so the serial API underscore config dot h uh, file. Um, this is where you can set some of the um, accessibility of the um, uh, of the different features. So for example, adjustable variables. This one is actually used for setting the um, motor power, and I think um, it was called motor strength. And there were a few other ones, but you can. You can have access to change those um, parameters, but you have to set this to be on. Um, same for um, calibration, so it allows calibration functions to be sent. You've got some EEPROM stuff here. The control module is the big one, though. So for this particular project, you need to set this to on so that you can actually command the um, gimbals to move. Um, we have a profiles module. 
um, the service module. I didn't really use the service module, but again, it's for all those same functions that you can see in the Basecamp GUI. Um, setting this variable to be on uh, will give you access to those um, functions. Um, here were some other um, functions. I didn't. I don't believe I changed any of these for this project. Um, oh, except for this one. So um, Arduino board. So you'd you basically want to set this to be on because you, you're you um, connected to an Arduino. Um, if you're using an STM32-based microcontroller, um, then you could set this one to on instead or connecting to Linux. I didn't um, try these other two, but we, we are using Arduino, so um, I set that to be true. Um, and then I did I don't believe I changed any of these other variables here. Oh, um, uh, let's see. Okay, so you can set this uh, this baud rate um, for the serial connections. I just left those at the, as the default of one one five two hundred, um, and I believe the rest is just the other two um, Linux and STM thirty two um, settings. Um, so hopping over to the app.h um, header file, um, what we have here. Um, let's see. This is where I define the pins. So if you are reading from the joysticks directly, then you would read from uh, these pins. Um, this is the other big one. So the RX and TX pins that you're using. Um, so the ESP32-S3, um, it has an internal multiplexer, which allows you to, um, it allows you to set the serial pins that you'd like to use, um, for the, um, serial connection to the, um, the base cam, uh, board. Um, and so I set those to be um, pins 18 and 17, as you can see um, from the original uh, wiring diagram, which uh, should be earlier in this video. I'm recording this other video later. <laughs> um, let's see, you can set a few other things here, um, pitch angles, minimum and maximum, um, play with those if you wish. Um, these values you don't need to change, it just has, these are just, it's basically just for structure. Um, it's talking about how many channels you're reading, you know, for the um, analog channels, um, didn't really need to uh, do too much here. Um, the rest of these are some um, helper functions. Um, yeah, so that's that's basically it for the, um, that's basically it for uh, the platform IO code. Um, and again, uh, as you move the three joysticks, you can see it is um, correctly um, and uh, correctly receiving those, um, those values over Bluetooth low energy, which are sent by the primary or the client um, ESP32. Here is one more note about the platformio.ini file. Um, so for this particular uh, ESP32 dev board I was using, um, uh, these were the settings for the uh, platformio.ini uh, file, just to uh, give that as a reference. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Um, I hope that you found this um, interesting and informative, and I hope it helps you with your next uh, base cam or gimbal control project. Um, and uh, if you need to, uh, for example, incorporate Bluetooth Low Energy into your next project using two ESP32 development boards, I hope this has been helpful as well. Um, and uh, the links to um, the majority of the project, majority of the products will be in the video description. Feel free to check out the um, article that I've also written on this project if you're looking for um, more, um, I guess, step-by-step -step instructions to complete this project. Um, and uh, so my name is Austin Allen. I've got 10 years of experience doing electromechanical design consulting for various industries um, and clients across the USA. So um, if you'd like to collaborate on a project um, or if you have any questions about this project or the other work that I do, feel free to reach out and um, I'll uh, try to respond as quickly as I can. Um, and um, otherwise, you know, I hope you guys have a great day and uh, thanks very much for watching and take care. See you next time.